This is Premier Aerodynamics podcast number 24, and today we're looking at the aerodynamics of a shuttlecock, a shuttlecock from badminton. And to do so, we're going to look at a paper called Numerical Investigation of the Flow Around a Feather Shuttlecock with Rotation. So you can either look at the aerodynamics of a shuttlecock with when it's static, so it's just moving through the air, no, no rotation, or with rotation, and looked at both in this paper. And the aerodynamics is quite complex for a shuttlecock. Between the two, there's rotating the shuttlecock really has a big effect on the aerodynamics. So in the abstract, they say rotation was found to reduce the drag coefficient of the shuttlecock, how, but it also affected the flow physics a lot. However, the drag coefficient is shown to be independent of the Reynolds number for both rotating and statically fixed shuttlecocks. So that's quite surprising. In addition, rotation is shown to have a clear influence on the formation of flow structures, particularly around the feather veins and the after of the shuttlecock base. So in other words, if you if you know what a shuttlecock looks like, which I guess most people do, it's there's this little cork front to it. It's uh, semi sort of semi spherical, and then you have out of it these feathers coming out in the and they're radially coming out. And obviously with feathers you have the the vein part, and then you have the feathery part. So what they're saying is that the rotation really affects the flow around these veins, and then also in the wake. So let's go into the paper more and talk about why this happens and some of the other aerodynamics of it. So just in addition to this, one interesting thing to note is that badminton is actually considered the fastest sport in, ter in terms of how fast the object moves that you're hitting or kicking. So the second fastest is squash. And for badminton, when they do a smash or whatever, the shadow clock can travel up to like 270 kilometers per hour it decelerates very quickly, but to begin with, it's super fast. So that's why it's considered the fastest sport around. Squash is a little bit lower. It's, I think, about 240 kilometers per hour the ball can travel up to, but it, the ball doesn't decelerate as quickly. So badminton has a real um, wide range of Reynolds numbers, and the aerodynamics is quite amazing. So let's talk about the aerodynamics a bit more. So in the introduction, they say shuttlecocks exhibit the largest in-flight deceleration of any sports projectile. So as I mentioned, they, will, they get hit very quickly, but they decelerate so quickly, and that's why you have a very large deceleration. These traditional shuttlecocks are constructed using 16 waterfowl feathers that have been trimmed to create a specific vein shape. The shaped feathers are inserted into the pre-drilled fabric-covered cork base and aligned to create a conical skirt over, of overlapping feathers. Feather shuttlecocks are considered aerodynamically superior to the synthetic polymer variations, despite the extensive efforts of manufacturers to create a synthetic shuttlecock with comparable performance. So one of the reasons that would be is because we don't understand the aerodynamics completely, so trying to develop something artificially to <laughs> take over the real life thing without understanding what it should really be doing is quite difficult. So that's probably one limitation. In addition, shuttlecocks experience a reduction in skirt diameter as the Reynolds number increases. So what this means is the um, the feathers coming off, they obviously come out radially and they make this sort of circular shape if you look at it from the back. As you hit it, these feathers are a little bit um, pliable, so they can shrink and expand and when you have rotation, they might be able to expand out or whatever. So what they're saying is with changing Reynolds number, this skirt does change in shape. However, it has been shown that there is no significant difference in skirt diameter between rotating and static conditions until the Reynolds number of um, 2.1 by 10 to the 5, so 210,000 above that, when centrifugal forces act on a spinning shuttlecock, causing an abrupt expansion of the skirt. So this is, um, I'm not sure how universal that rule of thumb is, considering that shuttlecocks, they not are only made from the waterfowl feathers, but you can have other feathers as well. Perhaps the most traditional and uh, consider the best shuttlecocks that would follow this rule, but other shuttlecocks would probably be different Reynolds numbers. But interestingly, still, you have a change in the size of the shuttlecock abruptly at a certain Reynolds number when you have it spinning. And finally, this paper presents a numerical comparison between a rotating and a statically fixed geometrically realistic feather shuttlecock at high Reynolds numbers. So the shuttlecock geometry they talk about they go in and they say that the geometry was based on a readily available Yonex Aero Sensor 50, a traditional cork and goose feather shuttlecock. So here they have goose feathers instead of uh, waterfowl feathers, so they are different, and I'm sure that the, the feathers do have different mechanical properties. 
The shuttlecock skirt comprises of 16 individual feathers inserted into the cork base with an angle of 20 degrees and another angle of 12 degrees. So I'll just explain that for those who are listening to this. So the angle of 20 degrees is the angle that the feather comes out of the of the cork. So it, if you can imagine a shuttlecock, you have the base, the little cork bit, and then the feathers coming out. They're sort of wedged out at about 20 degrees from the from the parallel line. Now the feathers are also rate, rotated a little bit about their axes, and they're rotated by 12 degrees. And the then there's twine binding the individual feathers, and they ha that twine has 1.4 millimeter diameter. So around the vein bits, there are two sections where twine goes around to hold all these feathers in place. The total shuttlecock height was 86 millimeters and a maximum skirt diameter of 66 millimeters. So to look into the aerodynamics of a shuttlecock, they looked at the CFD of it and they used the delay detached eddy simulation, so DDES, which is pretty good. It's um, it's in modern times, so this is 2022, this podcast is being recorded. This is about as high as we can go realistically in industry for simulations, unsteady at least. And they're using the K Omega SST model, which is really good. I, If you've heard me in other podcasts, I really like this model because I've used it a lot and it helps model really difficult features to model, for example, laminar separation bubbles. Other other models, like even just SST, is not really as good. So K Omega SST, I really like, and it's good that they use that as well. So moving on to the results and discussion, if you want to look at the the um, CFD, how they set it up and everything, you can look at the paper. The link is in, in the description, and it's open access and everything, so you can find it yourself. I'm not going to go through them because it's fairly straightforward. So moving on to the results and discussion. The drag coefficient can be seen to largely to be largely independent of the Reynolds number. The static shuttlecock had an average time average drag coefficient of 0.76. However, when it rotated, the drag dropped to 0.73, a 4% reduction. Now, experimental studies on they used other shuttlecocks and that they had 8% around, so it's very close. It should be noted that the shuttlecock feathers are rigid in this simulation, therefore the diameter is constant. However, as stated, no significant difference in D in the diameter between rotating and static conditions were observed experimentally until the Reynolds number of 210,000. The pressure drag was found to account for 95% of the measured drag for both conditions, and the contribution of each shuttle component was found independent of the Reynolds number. So what they found was that 13.5% of the drag came from the base, 22% came from the feather vein, sorry, the um the little parts of the feathers that are um, connecting the the rest of the feather to the cork, and then 56.5% from the veins and 7.4% from the twine. So they broke it down really nicely. And the fact that the pressure drag counts as 95% of the drag, that's not that surprising. I mean, it is quite high. I imagine that like 5% is accounted for with just skin friction and um, vortex drag, let's call it, any vortices coming off of it. So 95% coming just from the pressure drag is quite impressive, but when you think about the shape of it, it's it's kind of expected. Now they have a figure here, figure two, and for those of you who can't see, they have uh, who are just listening to this, they have both the static and the rotating shuttlecocks plotted, and sure enough, from about what's that 90 90 thousand Reynolds number to about 280 thousand 270 thousand, the drag between the two do not change, so they stay constant. So that's quite impressive. They go on and say applying rotation to the shuttlecock increased the drag on the shuttlecock by 1.1%. This increase is attributed to a decrease in pressure coefficient acting on the aft of the base. So the the pressure coefficient dropped from 1.15 for the static to minus sorry minus 1.15 for the static to minus 1.46 for rotating. So it dropped a lot. What's that about 25% reduction? A uh, 25% increase. Sorry. As the drag and statistical surface values were found to be independent of the Reynolds number, all results plotted here in are for the Reynolds number of 270,000. And they have some nice figures showing the 
pressure coefficient and skin friction coefficient distributions on these shuttlecocks, it can be seen that for the rotating condition, a lower skin friction coefficient is evident on the domed portion of the base. So the little cork part of the front, when it's rotating, for some reason has a significantly lower skin friction coefficient. So that's pretty amazing. And then it's followed by a clear band of separation. So after the initial um, dome bit of the, the cork, you have a flat bit and there's separation over that. And then the subsequent reattachment. A significant difference in the skin friction coefficient is visible on the aft of the base between the static and rotating con conditions. When the shuttlecock is rotating, skin friction values indicate a completely separated internal flow. So they go into this a bit more. I have a picture here which shows the mean velocity magnitude uh, cross section through the shuttlecock, so um, going through the cork and the feathers. And you can see that for the static condition, the velocity directly behind the, the cork bit, so in like in the feather section, is still fairly high. But when you apply rotation, there's a massive reduction in this velocity, and it's you can see there's a very big um, separation region. And they, that's what they mention. Adjacent to the stagnation region, it can be seen that the flow enters the shuttlecock between the base aft and the first twine band at a reduced velocity. So for some reason, this rotation is not only causing this um, greater separation, but also it's limiting how much flow can really come through these initial parts of the feathers to make up that. The shape of the flow at the trailing edge of the vein is also seen to change, suggesting that the vortex roll up and the separation in this region is altered. So when, when you rotate it, you have a quite a big difference in the velocity coming over after the wings, after the the feathers. So for the static condition you have still the flows fairly fast relatively speaking past the feathers but for the rotating condition there's a lot of a lower um, velocity. So interestingly as I mentioned earlier when they rotated the shuttlecock the drag reduced these pictures here would indicate that I don't know from a pressure coefficient kind of uh, from a pressure drag kind of uh, standpoint, you think that the rotating would increase the drag. So there's obviously something else going on that I can't see in these figures that's making up for these, these changes. The formation of the trailing edge vortices is indeed influenced by the rotation of the shuttlecock. The transient structures that form at the edge appear to extend less distance behind the shuttle and to break down quickly. So I have a picture here, down here in figure five. Now this is what they mentioned. I personally can't really see this too much. It looks like it's just a bunch of squiggles. They obviously studied this a lot more than I did to see this. But the main thing that I can really see is for the static condition, the vortices coming off of the feathers are almost aligned with the, the central vein of the feather. So they're very straight. But when you rotate it, there's obviously some sort of momentum that's imparted and there's a, a um, angle to them coming off. So that's what I can see. They go on and say that when, so they go and, and they talk about the vortices a bit more, and they say that thin streamwise cores can be observed to roll up between adjacent vein surfaces when the shuttlecock is statically fixed. These can be seen to extend at distance features, as distinct features a short distance behind a trailing edge before they begin to emerge they roll up into larger structures. So there are all these tiny little features and then they merge later on. When the shuttlecock is rotating, these thin streamwise core structures are not observed to form. Instead, vortices are seen to originate across the length of the trailing edge at regular intervals from the internal vein surface. So you already have these kind of coherent structures forming at the end of the feathers instead of waiting downstream. And then they say that these quickly begin to merge into larger structures. So that's a difference that the rotation makes in the flow physics. Instead of having lots of little structures that then form bigger structures much later downstream, it happens very quickly. No other significant differences in vortical structures are observed within the large wake that extends behind the shuttlecock. Other differences can be seen in the formation of vortices around the shuttle between the static 
and retaining conditions. Small streamwise vortices are seen to roll up and traverse across the external surface of the vein when the shuttlecock is rotating. Whilst when the shuttlecock is statically fixed, vortices can be seen to spiral around the shuttlecock cylindrical section of the base, as swirling around this section is induced by the flow being drawn into the shuttlecock, uh, like the, the vein section. So that's pretty cool. When you have um, this sort of suction of flow coming in, and then that changes the flow physics. So make, before we go any further, just make sure to check out everything we do here at Primary Dynamics. Check out the instruments we make. We make the Atmosphere Hawk, we make PIV systems, we make traversing systems. Check them out, link in the description. Check out the courses we put on to make you a better analysis. We do CFD, experimental and theoretical to make you a better analysis. Check out the essential aerodynamics conference we put on every year. It's there for all aerodynamics to get together and talk about what we love doing, aerodynamics. So links to them are all in the description. Check them out. And finally, so in conclusion, the rotating shuttlecock was found to have a drag coefficient that is less, that is 4% lower than the statically fixed shuttlecock. Flow structures and therefore measured drag coefficient were clearly shown to be influenced by rotation, particularly aft of the shuttlecock base, at the vein trailing edges and across the vein surfaces. So there were some distinct areas where the flow physics did change a lot and that changed the, the drag coefficient. As I mentioned earlier, a lot of this seemed to affect the pressure drag but somehow it all added up to have a reduction of 4% for the rotation. So that's the end of this podcast. Make sure to like and subscribe. Check out everything we do here at Premier Aerodynamics. And I'll see you in the next podcast. Peace out.